Welcome back to What Should I Play, and today... Hey, 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 it's time to make some crazy money! Crazy Taxi was released in arcades in 1999 by Sega on their Naomi hardware. Short for New Arcade Operation Machine Idea, the Naomi hardware was an evolution of Sega's Model 3 arcade hardware. While the Model 3 operated with individual PC boards for each game, the Naomi adopted the Neo Geo MVS's design of ROM cartridges that were interchangeable, thereby making it possible to swap almost any game into any given cabinet. But why am I going so into depth on the Naomi hardware? Well, it turns out that the Sega Dreamcast was built on the same architecture, sharing a main processor, graphics processor, and sound system. This made porting games from the arcade to the Dreamcast a breeze, and because of that, the Dreamcast featured the near-arcade-perfect port of Crazy Taxi. The gameplay is quite simple. Pick one of four cabbies, each with their individual personalities and attributes, and race around a fictionalized coastal town picking up potential fares and delivering them to their destinations within the time limit. What made this different from other racing games at the time was your ability to free roam through the city and landscape and attempt to find the shortest route from point to point. The world was populated not just with other cars, but with numerous bystanders, helping to make the world bustling parks and outdoor cafes come alive. Another feature of Crazy Taxi that really brought it to life was its energetic, fast, pop-punk soundtrack. Featuring songs by The Offspring and Bad Religion, even though the playlist was short, the sense of urgency they added to the game got your blood pumping and your heart racing. Crazy Taxi is also an example of some of the most prolific product placement in video games. While driving around the city, Passengers will continually request to be taken to a number of real-world restaurants and stores, namely Pizza Hut, KFC, Levi's, and the now-defunct Tower Records. Though they were likely added for advertising reasons, it really makes the world feel believable. Do you have any memories of Crazy Taxi? How about games that have awesome soundtracks? And what was your favorite example of product placement in games? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, thanks for tuning in. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe, follow me on Facebook, like me on Twitter, and come back next time when I help you figure out what you should play. Click here to check out last week's episode. Class E license. No, no, not good enough. You need some practice. Go on, get back out there. Game over.